For the Bengal tiger, life is precarious. Hunting is never easy with your prey constantly on high alert. And an ambush is near impossible with youngsters in tow. Over the course of a day, one mother will try everything to feed her three cubs. But nothing is a given in the jungle. Survival requires perseverance and luck. With the odds stacked against her, what hand can this mother play to win? It's dawn in late June, the end of the dry season in southern India. Hidden in the jungle, an iconic creature stirs, a stunning Bengal tigress. This is Rana. She's nine years old. At 10 feet long, from nose to tail, she's 300 pounds of sleek muscle, power, and experience. Up early, she's enjoying the cool morning air before the summer heat sets in. Although she looks relaxed, She's wrestling with a dilemma. She's the mother of three hungry cubs. At nine months old, they've been weaned for about three months. Now, they eat a diet made up entirely of meat, which Rana still has to catch for them. Adult tigers usually make a kill about once a week. But to feed herself and her cubs, she needs to catch 50% more food. Most wild tigers live for only about a decade. At nine years old, Rana might be starting to lose her edge. Hunting is becoming harder, and she hasn't brought home any food for nearly two weeks. If her cubs are to thrive, Rana must make a kill, and soon. Rana and her young family live in Nagahole National Park in southern India. It's a land of wet, deciduous forests, and is part of the largest area of connecting tree cover in the country. Once the favorite hunting grounds of local royalty, the 250 square mile reserve is now the protected home of more than 90 tigers. Rana holds sway over 40 square miles of forests and grasslands rocky vantage points, and large water holes. Perfect tiger hunting territory. It should provide her and her cubs with everything they need. But it's not quite that simple. Just because there's plenty of potential prey around doesn't mean it wants to be eaten. Only one in 20 tiger hunts is successful, even in perfect conditions. But Rana has three rather boisterous complications.
A year ago, Rana mated with a young male whose territory overlaps hers. Like all males, after mating, he went on his way. Three months later, she gave birth to a trio of female cubs. Tigers often have triplets, but this was the first time for Rana. Getting them this far is a great achievement. Even for the fittest mothers, only half of cubs reach adulthood. At nine months old, Rana's cubs are now following her on hunting expeditions. They must learn how to ambush. But being so young, they have a habit of giving away the game, which makes Rana's job even harder. It's a dilemma. Hunt solo and increase her odds of making a kill, or try to catch food while training her cubs. Something that can seem like a futile pursuit. A large water hole lies in the middle of Rana's territory. By June, the end of the dry season, this is one of the few places left to find a drink. But for prey species, moving from the shelter of the forest to the water's edge leaves them vulnerable. Hidden dangers lurk. Mugger crocodiles. They can grow over 12 feet long and are the perfect ambush predators. Motionless and perfectly camouflaged, they can wait for hours for an opportunity to snatch their prey. Chital deer are the first to venture out into the open. They're on high alert. And they're not the only ones. Hanuman langurs are also on the crocs menu. The simple act of drinking is risky. It's much harder to keep an eye out for approaching danger. Visiting the waterhole together provides greater security. With more eyes, some can watch their backs while others quench their thirst. It's not just crocodiles they need to look out for. All these animals would make a fine meal for a tiger. A langur alarm call rings out. Rana. Like crocodiles, tigers are ambush predators. But this water hole is too exposed to make a good hunting ground. So she just saunters in. With Rana no threat, and the crocodiles basking on the shore. The langurs can relax. This morning, she's here to drink, just like everybody else. Rana's young cubs enjoy morning playtime. Their games are a way of honing their hunting skills. Even mom will join in to demonstrate a trick or two. Practicing the best pounce and ambush technique will be vital for their survival. Now adolescents, 
These cubs are already almost half Rana's size. They're growing fast, and like all teenagers, they're always hungry. So, before the day gets too hot, it's time to put their hunting skills to the test. Rana leads her three cubs into the grasslands in search of lunch. Unlike the exposed water hole, there's cover here for hunting. And with three rowdy pupils in tow, Rana needs all the cover she can get. Chital deer know the forest is full of predators. The females constantly scan the area, looking for anything suspicious, and keep their fawns close. Standing up to three feet tall at the shoulder and weighing more than a hundred pounds, one of these deer would provide several meals for Rana and her cubs. But a tiger must get within 30 feet of its target to have any chance of a successful ambush. So they approach slowly, stealthily, stalking through the long grass. They need to focus on the deer and keep perfectly silent. No chance. This cub is distracted by a palm frond. One deer stares toward the noise, but they've all seen her. Rana's cover is blown. Completely. Reaching speeds of 40 miles per hour, they are quickly out of reach. The cubs have yet to learn the tiger's golden rule. Until you stalk and overrun, you can't devour anyone. At this rate, they're getting nowhere fast. Bringing her cubs on hunting trips just isn't working. If Rona stands any chance of bagging a meal, she needs to do this on her own. Some distance from danger, the deer can relax. Most quickly return to grazing. But some of the males have other things on their mind. It's the peak of the mating season. Time to concentrate on impressing a female. On reaching puberty at one year old, males begin to grow antlers. The older they get, the larger and more complex the antlers become. Ultimately, these hard, bony structures can grow to nearly three feet long. As he thrashes the vegetation, this stag certainly gets attention. Scraping his hooves on the ground spreads smelly secretions from glands in his feet. Another signal to the nearby female that he means business. But he must do more than simply catch her eye. She'll only mate with the most impressive male so he must compete with the others. 
a nearby show-off could threaten his chances. He needs to prove who's in charge. Strong antlers are a dangerous weapon. They could put out an eye, or even worse, Sparring determines the male's social hierarchy. His rival soon backs down. He'll try his chances again, but next time with a lower ranking male. The big stag has proven himself. And now he can devote more time to courting his female. In seven and a half months, their union will produce a fawn. With tigers on the prowl, its mother will need to be extra vigilant. Baby deer are small and vulnerable, yet within just 20 minutes of being born, they are up on their feet and walking. They have to be. The predators of these forests never pass up an easy meal. After the fiasco of the morning hunt, Rana and her cubs head to another water hole. Unlike most cats, Tigers are happy in water. And this family often enjoys a swim, especially in the summer heat. Until they eat again, they should be conserving their energy. A sensible tiger typically rests for more than 16 hours a day. But the girls just want to have fun. They don't know the danger they're in. Right now, they're strong. But without food, starvation can quickly set in. Last year, Rana's previous litter of two cubs died of malnutrition at just a few months old. She needs a new plan to provide for the girls. So this time, Rana sets off alone. She'll know where to find them when she returns. Hopefully, with dinner. The heat of the dry season hangs heavy over Nagahole National Park in southern India. The water hole at the center of Rana's territory is too exposed for hunting, and the animals in the grasslands are on high alert. So Rana heads west. Tigers can walk more than six miles a day looking for food. She isn't wandering aimlessly. She has a mental map of her territory. Out in the scrublands, there's one species that could provide her family with an incredible feast. Gore. At almost 10 feet long and over six feet tall, male gore are the largest of the wild cattle species. They graze on a wider variety of plants than any other hooved animal in India. 
eating their way to a staggering weight of 2,000 pounds. They are one of the largest living mammals on land. Gore might be big, but tigers can kill prey five times their own weight. An experienced tigress like Rana could have the skills and power to take on an animal of this size. But it could come at a heavy price. Those formidable horns can cause serious injury. And gore have been known to kill tigers that attack them. With three cubs totally dependent on her, she needs to be careful. Waiting among the trees, Rana spies a safer opportunity. A young calf has strayed away from the herd. Straight into danger. To stand any chance, Rana needs it to get closer. It's still not quite near enough, but she'll give it a try. In her prime, Rana could hit 40 miles per hour. Now, age is slowing her down. From this range, the calf can easily outrun her. It's not worth wasting her energy. Rejoining its family, the calf will be better protected. It's had a lucky escape. But it's another failure for Rana. She's left empty-handed yet again. It's time to catch her breath and regroup. Her hunger is getting desperate. of walking and the botched hunts have been draining. A nap away from her troublesome cubs is a chance to recuperate. As noon approaches, the temperature tops 100 degrees. Time for a drink. While Rana can relax, other animals never let down their guard. On the banks of the waterhole, pairs of red wattled lapwings feed in the shallows. These small wading birds are highly territorial, chasing off any intruders, particularly at this time of year. The end of June is nesting season. Some families are protecting their precious new hatchlings. Whereas others are still sitting on eggs. Eggs and chicks are both camouflaged to blend in with the dry, dusty ground. And with good reason, lots of animals would love to make a meal of these bite-sized birds.
Indian monitor lizards patrol the waterfront on the hunt for easy pickings. The lapwing nests, with their unhatched eggs, provide the perfect snack. The frantic parents dive bomb the raider, puffing themselves up and surrounding it to scare it off. It's a desperate attempt to save their unborn chicks. But the lizard doesn't scare easily. The eggs are a high-protein, nutritious source of food. Finally, the lizard has had its fill. Fewer than 60% of lapwing eggs will survive. It's a harsh reality for the parents. But while their eggs didn't make it, these chicks have had a lucky escape. Within moments of hatching, chicks are up on their feet and able to leave the nest. They can run from danger, and their doting parents help protect them. If a chick can get through its perilous first week, it has a much better chance of survival. Its parents can teach it what to eat, where to find it, and most importantly, where to hide. After spending the morning at the waterhole, the cubs have retreated to the shade of the forest in the midday heat. At nine months old, the cubs should weigh more than 120 pounds each. But with the lack of regular food, they're starting to look thin. While a feast then fasting diet is normal for tigers, going too long between meals will take its toll in the long run. Even if they don't starve, a lack of food can make them more vulnerable to disease, injury, or infection. It's vital that Rana brings back food soon. By early afternoon, it's still too hot to contemplate hunting. While Rana enjoys these cool waters, the constant high summer temperatures and the fierce afternoon sun take their toll on the water holes themselves. Some ponds have almost completely dried up. For many animals, this provides a different opportunity. A wild boar and her piglets snuffle in the damp mud for grubs and other insects. Large gray babblers use the dusty ground to clean their feathers of parasites and excess oil. And red rumped swallows collect mud to build their nests. As the water evaporates, it leaves a salty residue on the muddy surface. And this attracts a beautiful spectacle.
Right now, just before the onset of the monsoon, common immigrant butterflies gather in their hundreds as they migrate between breeding sites. They're here to feast on important nutrients and minerals found in the mud. Substances they don't get from their usual diet of nectar. These act like vitamins, boosting the butterfly's health and increasing their reproductive success. They won't stay long. They're on the search for the best place to lay their eggs. But for now, this dry water hole provides everything they need. As the afternoon progresses, the heat gradually abates. Now cool and relaxed, Rana resumes her search for food. She knows there's prey grazing nearby. A Nilgai has joined the Chital deer. Nilgai are the largest antelopes in Asia. At over 200 pounds, they would make an ideal meal. In the forest, Rana is almost invisible. Her orange fur might seem bright and conspicuous to the human eye, but in the jungle, it's the perfect camouflage. The stripes help to break up her outline, and the colors blend with patches of sunlight and shadow in the dappled afternoon light. And she has one more advantage. Deer have excellent vision in low light, the trade-off is that they can't discriminate between red and green. This color blindness means Rana all but vanishes in a deer's eyes. They must rely on their acute sense of smell and incredible hearing to alert them to this danger. Rana approaches the herd downwind, so her scent doesn't give her away. As long as she moves slowly and silently, hidden behind a tree, she's got a good chance. The Nilgai senses something. again. Today just isn't her day. A chorus of alarm calls alerts everything within a hundred yards. Rana's blown her chance of catching anything here. The pressure of finding food for her hungry family is taking its toll. For an older female like Rana, all this exertion is even more exhausting. But while age may be catching up with her, it does bring a wealth of experience and knowledge to adapt her stalking technique to suit the situation. As Rana continues her hunt for food, something else catches her attention. This time, it's not prey. Rana shares her territory with leopards. At 150 pounds, they're only half her size. Food is scarce enough. Rana isn't in the mood to share with another large predator. She'll force the leopard to leave her territory. But before she can make a move, the leopard spots her. 
and has a simple trick to get well out of reach. Climbing trees comes naturally to these agile felines. Pound for pound, leopards are the strongest of the big cats and are able to drag their kills high into the branches. Rana's no slouch when it comes to climbing herself. With powerful leg muscles and sharp claws four inches long, tigers are surprisingly adept in the trees. Still, Rana's far too heavy for the thin branches at the treetops. The leopard knows it's well out of harm's way. They mainly hunt by night, so this one will wait out the daylight up in the branches, away from trouble and resting comfortably. Sort of. For now, Rana leaves her mark on a nearby tree. It sends a message to the leopard and all in the forest. This is her territory, and she's not going to share. Rana isn't the only tiger struggling to find enough to eat. Over the last century, throughout India, tigers have lost vast numbers of their natural prey to human poaching. Together with significant habitat loss, both tigers and their prey are being squeezed into smaller and more fragmented pockets of jungle. With only two and a half thousand Bengal tigers left in the wild, and their numbers still decreasing, tigers like Rana face an uncertain future. The afternoon is wearing on. Rana hasn't seen her cubs since morning. It's time to head back. But as she nears the water hole where she left the cubs, there's one last place to try. A clearing where animals have gathered to feed before night falls. It's not an easy place to hunt but it's her last resort. In such large groups, the grazers are all much safer. From the langurs with their vantage point in the trees. To the vigilant mothers protecting their fawns, there are hundreds of eyes here to spot potential danger. But they're only safe when they stick together. A foolish male sambar deer heads to the woods, alone. It's today's last chance. She waits. The deer must come as close as possible. The ambush causes chaos. Alarm calls spread panic. Finally, Rana has her prize. At over 700 pounds, this Sambar deer is a significant kill. The noise has alerted her cubs. They come to join her at the feast.
In a single sitting, Rana alone can eat over 70 pounds of meat. But it's the cubs who will really prosper from the rich protein. Covered with tiny hooks, their tongues have a rough rasping texture. These barbs work like a comb, scraping and tearing fur and flesh from the dead deer. Once the meat is exposed, they can start to feed properly. While their three inch long canines are used to bite and kill their prey, it's the sharp carnassial teeth on the side of their jaw that they use to rip into the carcass and slice through chunks of meat. They'll continue to feed on the kill, on and off, for the next four days. With their limited sense of taste, a decaying carcass won't be a problem. They'll happily eat rotting meat. As the last sibling finishes feeding for this sitting, Rana moves back in. She knows the leopard is still nearby. And with meat left on the carcass, she doesn't want to lose the rest of this meal. Scraping up dirt and twigs with her paws, she helps to conceal the sight and smell from potential scavengers. The family will stay nearby. Finally well fed, they'll rest and digest together. Bloody from feeding, they also need a bath. Grooming and hygiene is an important part of life these cubs must learn. Rana's rough tongue now gently cleans her cub's fur. Its small hooks detangling the hairs and removing dirt and parasites. Her saliva is mildly antiseptic and may help to prevent infections. But licking is also a sign of affection and strengthens the bonds between mother and daughters. Rana's devotion to her cubs is tireless and she's doing all she can to provide for them. Her challenge now is to pass on her skills and experience as a hunter. She's got one more year to make sure these cubs are equipped to survive on their own. Her girls still have a lot to learn, but with such an experienced mother to guide them, the odds may just be on their side.